Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. Now, news and details. The central government has decided to increase the dearness allowance of, or DA by 3% for government employees. The DA has been hiked from 31% to 34%. The decision was taken in a cabinet meeting of the union government. The increase in dearness allowance or DA comes as a relief for the central government employees. Amid the rising prices of fuel and increasing inflation, the increase in DA was stalled due to COVID-19 pandemic. The dearness allowance is paid to the central government employees to offset the impact of inflation on the employees' salaries. It is applicable for board employees and pensioners. The dearness allowance that was previously given to the union government employees and prisoners Pensioners was 31% and the 3% hike that was announced in the meeting to the DA to 34%. The decision is set to benefit about 50 lakh government employees and 65 lakh pensioners. The last DA hike was given in October last year when it was increased from 28% to 31%. The government used to pay 18K as dearness allowance to employees. Now that amount will be risen to 24,000 as per the newly announced DA hike. Imran Khan-led Pakistan Tirik e insaf government received a major blow by the key ally and the main coalition partner Mutahida Kwami Movement Pakistan after it struck a deal with the opposition Pakistan People's Party. The United Opposition and MQM have reached an agreement. Rapta Committee, MQM and PPPCC will ratify the said agreement. We will then share details with the media in a press conference tomorrow, IA. Congratulations, Pakistan, tweeted PPP chairman Bilal Wal Puto Zardari. The PTI government lost the majority in the lower house of the parliament following the late night development ahead of the no confidence motion against Imran Khan on March 21st. The joint opposition has 177 members of the National Assembly after the ruling coalition partner MQMP decided to part ways with the Imran Khan led government that has left with 164 MNAs. Notably, in order to make the no-confidence motion against the Prime Minister successful, the joint opposition requires the support of 172 MNAs. Meanwhile, after Imran Khan alleged that some people are trying to topple his government with the help of foreign funds, Federal Minister Zat Umar claimed that PM is ready to show a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan, Umar Atta Pandial, to back his claims. Coffee produced from Nagaland has secured third position and awarded the silver plaque in the third annual Aurora International Taste Challenge held at South Africa in 2021. This was informed by Director of Land Resources and Development, Kohima Wal, addressing the media at its directorate office today. Director of Land Resources, A. Pong Tung Jamir, expressed his happiness on winning the award. He said that the main target of the department was to encourage the farmers to go for coffee plantation when coffee was proposed in the year 2014. He said that coffee Coffee is one of such crop where the farmers can get a maximum profit and where rural activity will be uplifted. He also stated that there are 32 farmers that have more than 10 hectares of coffee plantation in the state. 10 hectares is 32. That is from Kimabur, uh, 15 farmers and Koima, 14 farmers and Zinibutu, 3 farmers. Of course, in all the districts, our farmers, maybe five, six hectares to almost all are uh, having that area. But marginal farmers, at the most, one to two hectares or some maybe less than hectares also. So at the moment, the development has covered is, uh, the developed area is 9,832 hectares. Yes, we have covered this co uh, coffee. And the government has identified the potential area in Nagaland 
out of the total geographical area of Nagaland. <coughs> Suitable area in Nagaland is 10,40,100 hectares. Through the GIS, the development has identified that the area and target for 2030, we have set about 30,000 hectares. To 2030, the government has said 30,000 hectares and present coverage, the area coverage is 9,832 hectares, and all of which present production is 56. Director of Naga Coffee Private Limited, Dr. Peter Vermeulen from Cape Town, South Africa, said that Nagaland's coffee is the finest as it has the best taste. He said that the climate has adopted the coffee well in a state where the produce has been good and which is a good source of income to the coffee farmers. He said that the coffee grown in Nagaland had the potential to become one of the top coffee producing states in the world and lauded the land resource department in the initiative. Uh, award if you get a single estate. So we didn't get a single estate because I wanted to blend the different coffees. Uh, so after we blend it, we entered for the blend, uh, the black coffee blend. So uh, we took all the coffee, we hand picked it, uh, took out all the, all the, all the, to make sure the coffee is extremely well quali uh, quality. Roasted it, blend, blend, blend. For about three months, I played with it because everything was close. And then we entered a competition which was uh, in September last year. And many different uh, categories was uh, entered. And the first prize is double gold, second prize is gold, and then our tribal blend got silver award. So it means third place. So it was for, for, for us as a company, it was extremely well because the moment you compete with other. Uh, international players you get your benchmark if you don't compete you don't know uh, because the judges is from different areas so if i just drink nagaland coffee and i don't experience other coffees you don't get a wider variety so there's people with coffee from thailand coffee coffee from uh, south america different states are entered so for us it is a great uh, achievement to see that all the processes that have been uh, developed through the years are starting uh, to get recognized. So land resources have worked very long with me since I came here. They've really been helpful establishing the right varieties. The Kohima Municipal Council on Wednesday became the first urban local body in Nagaland to go digital with the launch of online KMC services, EKMC portal. The website was launched by Advisor for Urban Development and Municipal Affairs, Nikki Salikiri, at the Kohima Smart City Office in Kohima. Speaking at the program, Dr. Kiri said, change in society is coming into reality. Congratulating the team, Kiri said that Kohima Online KMC Services is one of the first in Kohima to go digital. We are becoming a digital society, so must use the technology to the best, he said. Kiri also requested the gathering to help other municipal council to come out with such kind of initiatives. The government has also mentioned that change is coming. People are laughing, people are creating, you know, comments. But I think it is turning into a reality. And therefore, I personally feel that not because I'm in the government. We all are part of the government also. And there was sometimes whenever we all get time, I think a little expression of thank you to the government will still be a big thing. Because it will be at least expected people, nobody will say, seeing the changes, we thank you. And even if it is something of a small thank you, I think that will be a big uh, encouragement to all the people who are in the government. And uh, as I just a while listening to you about people coming, or you have a you open even the centers here where people, all people will come to help for help. My only request is, since the other day we had a program on that senior citizen things, we 
very polite and courteous to the old people who come. Engineer J.D. Lauren Rengma, Senior Technical Director and DIONIC and Online Coordinator of Municipal Affairs said that public grievances is for all ULBs, but for now they have been activated only for Kohima District as a pilot project. He said that public grievances are and redress applications is built for all the urban local bodies which will be rolled out across the ULBs if the pilot project is successful. Moodle in the form of EKMC. With the introduction of EKMC, our citizens can now apply for KMC service such as trade license, sales permit, temporary permit, advertisement permit, and even res residential services to start with. You can apply these services from anywhere at any place at any time by using the mobile phones or laptops without visiting the office physically. They can also make transition online which will give more transparency. The KMC will now able to process and approve the applications completely online. The approved license and certificates will also be digital and payments can be made both online and offline as per the convenience of the applicants. CEO of KSCDL, K. Tunio, said that one of the key objectives of Smart City Mission is to make use of innovation and technology to improve existing systems. She acknowledged the staff for taking a proactive role from the design phase to the training capacity building and implementation to become the first municipal in Nagaland to go digital and make history. She also hopes that other cities in Nagaland and Northeast will also take this opportunity to learn the best practices from Kohima Smart City as to strive towards becoming truly smart cities under the Smart Cities mission. She said with the launch of the portal, it will propel the state to not just become relevant in this digital age, but become a leader in e-governance and ultimately become a digital society and a digital government. By the inspector, and that shall be sent to the chief inspector for approval. The chief inspector shall approve and then send to KMC secretary or administrator, that is for final approval. Once the final approval is accorded, through online, the form will return to the applicant. That will direct the applicant through SMS that uh, it is now ready for payment. Once payment is done, <laughs> through online using banking or credit card, UPI, Google Pay, or Google Pay. The same shall be <clears throat> once the payment is received, certificate will be generated online. Now the facility, to facilitate a smooth transition and uh, from offline to online services as our CEO has already mentioned earlier, the ekmc.in is a website that would guide to obtain municipal services such as trade license, residential registration, sales permit, advertisement registration, payer bills, etc. The services can ex be accessed from phone, tab and computers. All online service data can be generated worldwide in this ekmc.in platform which can be accessed through authorized users with which is KMC or through API from the Kohima Smart City Open Data Platform. During the program, five tablets were also handed over to the Kohima Municipal Council. A 
A farewell program for outgoing Deputy Commissioner of Mokoktung, Limo Wapang Jamir, was held at DC Bangla on Wednesday. The DC, while delivering his farewell speech, said that whatever little was done during his short stay at Mokoktung was only because of the teamwork and contribution from all quarters, for which he thanked all heads of officers, subordinates, administrative officers, NGOs, and the public of Mokoktung in general. He said his stay in Mokokchung for two years and four months was a memorable and successful journey, adding that with fond memories. He is leaving more enriched with the knowledge and wisdom acquired from the people of Mokokchung, he added. He also assured the people of Mokokchung to extend any kind of help when needed. The DC further made an appeal to the incoming DC to look into the matter of acute water shortage in Mokokchung. It is so much better. Even at midnight, we can roam around without any apprehension. So my dear HODs, we are working in a very, uh, very good environment now. We should be thankful to the churches we should be thankful to the civil societies of Nagaland. With their in intervention, now we don't see bloodletting between brothers. Situation is so much better. So I appeal to all the HODs that with commitment, renewed commitment. Please, when you are posted here, or any other district, <coughs> serve the people. Whoever enters our office chamber, they come with one grievances or the other. They just don't come, they just don't come just to chit chat with us. But they come with a problem, they come with a grievance, try to mitigate the problem at the earliest. I'm sure, I, I'm fortunate to have a very good team of HODs. I'm sure you will, you will uplift Mogokshan district in days to come. I know your caliber. So don't underperform. In a short speech in coming DC, Shushank Pratap Singh hoped for guidance and support from the DC in the future. Short speeches were delivered by Dr. Senditula DFO on behalf of DPDP members, Autula T. M. Chin, S. P. Mukokchung, Chupawati, President of Au Sintin, Lima Nang Sang Kichu, President AWUM, Au Nukin, Accountant on behalf of DC staff, Lipok Nakshi, PA to DC on behalf of Dubashis, Dharam Raj, ADC, Mangkulamba on behalf of Outpost Administrative Officers. The district with, along with the DC, I'll be able to handle the issues very comfortably and we'll be able to sail through the challenges. Now, when I think about all those things, I am very delighted to admit and I want to acknowledge that I have been proven right in my repose, in his leadership, in our DC's leadership and in his commitment to the working and to the upliftment of the people of our district. When we work in different, different districts, I think we all look up to the deputy commissioners. And deputy commissioner, as we all know, is the nerve center of all the administrative works that happen in a district. Now, when we come to the real life situations, as our uh, member has rightly mentioned, the situation is very 
dynamic. It's in a flux, the society today. And we never know what the next hour or what the next minute will drop to us. And it is in all those moments that I have seen that our DC has so level-headedly, so coolly been able to sail us through. And it is because of his commitment towards the working of the people, plus his ability to build a teamwork in the among all the members who work with him. A training on Nagaland Village and Tribal Council Act 1978 and Village Development Board Model Rule 1980 for VCCs and VDP secretaries for nine RD blocks on the Mokokchung district was held at Town Hall. The RD blocks are Ungpangkong South, Ungpangkong North, Kupulong, Longchem, Changtungya, Mangkulamba, Chuchuyamlang, Tuli, and Sarangkong. Speaking as the resource person, Dr. Kedise Pucho, Principal ETC Peck said that the central ministry concept is to make the whole rural India into a single system, but Nagaland, Mizoram, and other northeast states have its unique system of local self-government. He maintained that the Panjayati Raj system is a three-tier system where elections are held and this advantage is that it falls under party system. However, he said that Nagaland Village and Area Council Act is unique and there is no party affiliation. He also spoke on Nagaland Village Tribal Council Act 1978, VCC and VCM qualification, powers, duties and disqualification. Control of Village Council and Tribal Council Act, VDP Model Rules 1980, VDP Audit and Eligibility of Auditors and Role of DC. Other resource persons, Apreno Tetsuyo, BDO Kazupokpa BDO and Imuakam DBO also spoke on the topic VDP Composition and Management Committee, Operating Bank Account and Composition and Intending Beneficiaries VDP respectively. The training was organized by the State Institute of Rural Development. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.